Now that we have the mode showing what we want to analyze, how we want it to see it displayed, and have set up the variables of our cable under test, let's analyze them. From the setup screen, press the back button to get to the startup screen, which is the analysis screen for our selection of two traces that are displayed separately. The things we will mainly be concerned with are arranged vertically along the left side. At the top left, the battery icon shows the state of charge of the battery. This has four vertical bars. The more bars, the more charge remains in the battery. Next to this is an icon that indicates the current operational state, expert, zoom, auto, or manual. These are what we will be considering. As discussed earlier, if man is displayed, the TDR2010 is in automatic mode. You press the first soft key, auto over man, to change back and forth between automatic and manual mode. Notice that in these operating modes, the left and right arrows of the up, down, left, right arrows on the right, the navigation group, move the cursors. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And the up and down arrows here change the amount of the cable under test that is displayed on the screen. In other words, we are not in setup now, so we can't move among the other variables shown across the top that we changed in the setup screen. Let's analyze some traces. In this case, we have two traces and we are in automatic mode. Man is displayed at the top left. It's time now to look at the cursors on the screen. Each trace has two cursors. The distance from the TDR2010 to each cursor is at the bottom of the screen under that cursor. The distance between the cursors is right next to the delta sign, the triangle. In this case, there are four cursors on the screen. The active one, the one that is controlled by the left and right arrows of the navigation group, is a dashed line. The other three are solid lines. The left or right arrow of the navigation group may be bumped or held down to move the active cursor. If it is held down, the speed with which the cursor moves increases the longer the cursor is held down. Using the up and down arrows of the navigation group, increase the amount of cable displayed on the screen for the active trace until an event is visible. Let's move back to the soft keys on the left. As we said, the first soft key will alternate between manual and automatic mode. The second soft key with the icon C1, C2 tells the left and right arrows of the navigation group which cursor to move. Let's skip down to the second to the bottom soft key with its associated icon C3, C4. These two soft keys not only change between the cursors to be moved on their associated trace, but also select which traces cursors will be moved. Note that when C1, C2 soft key is pushed, one of the cursors on the top trace, the T1 trace, goes from solid to dashed, indicating that it is the active trace, the one that can be moved. Notice also that the distance shown on the screen, upper right above the trace, is highlighted. If we press the soft key next to the C3, C4 icon, one of the cursors on the bottom trace, the T2 trace, goes from solid to dashed. The distance shown on the screen for that trace is now highlighted. Let's look now at the zoom function, which is controlled by the fourth soft key from the top, the one with the magnifying glass icons with plus and minus signs in them. The active trace is trace 1, and the active cursor of that trace is cursor 2. We have placed this cursor where we think the event is located. Press this zoom soft key 
and the inactive trace, trace 2, disappears and in its place a duplicate of trace 1 appears. The zoom icon will change to a magnifying glass and a right pointing arrow. Along the top of this duplicate is a list of magnification levels from which we can choose. Each time the zoom soft key is pressed, the level of magnification is changed and that level is highlighted. The cursor can be moved to adjust its position on the trace. When we are finished zooming, press the back button on the right side. The zoom feature is active only when more than 300 feet of cable is displayed on the screen. Now that we have explored manually locating the event, let's look at the TDR2010's expert function, which makes the TDR2010 find events on the cable under test. The expert soft key is the third from the top. Its icon is a trace with a small right-facing arrow. Press this soft key and a new cursor appears where the TDR2010 finds an event. The distance to that event is displayed at the top of that new cursor. The expert icon now changes to a large solid right pointing arrow. Note that the inactive trace has been replaced with a zoom trace of the active trace. Additional presses of the expert soft key will cause this new cursor to move to additional events that are further along the cable under test. Press the back key to exit the expert function. That covers the basic analysis operation of the TDR2010.